welcome. People like you are making a difference in the lives of people every day. You can do so precisely where you are. Calvary Temple Church's Carrie Gregg joins me to challenge us all in our walk with God and to remind us how He so frequently uses ordinary people like you and me. Stay with us. Caring for who God made you and who yeah. He gifted you, that opens the opportunity for peace, for um, fulfillment in God, mm -hmm. and um, He also can use you in great ways. But understanding that God has a purpose for everyone's life and He wants to use us in some aspect. Welcome back. Carrie Gregg works to lead community involvement in nine key areas through Calvary Temple Church of Concord, the church she and her husband John pastor. Today she talks about this effective outreach program, her journey to this point in her life, and how she emphatically believes God uses ordinary people in ways they may never fathom on their own. I'm so glad you're with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Let's start with ordinary people. Well, that's who I am. <laughs> Truly, just an ordinary person that um, long ago just said yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised in a Christian home, wonderful parents, and we made a move in our life and kind of stopped uh, having regular church time uh, going together. And so I was invited by the neighbors. And so my whole junior high and high school, I went with the neighbors and that changed my life. I made a commitment to Christ and just said, I'll serve you wherever. But knowing that, I didn't realize where he would actually allow me, truly allow me to serve. When you were first asked to attend church with this neighbor family, uh -huh. what, what did you think? I, I think a lot of people are apprehensive about inviting someone or, you oh, know. Oh yeah, I, I tell people all the time, you know, look at your children's best friend. And if they are not involved in a church, bring them along. It was my girlfriend's um, experience. She was nervous to go by herself to youth group. And oh. so for her to have her best buddy right there with her, it made a difference in both of our lives. And so I often tell parents, you know, your mission field could be right mm. there, you know, at your slumber party and inviting those children. So uh, I find that that's a really important um, aspect that parents need to realize they yeah. have a great opportunity to welcome other children into their church experience. Do you remember that first night? The first oh, night? yes. It was quite different than the church that I had grown up in. And uh, I remember gripping the seat thinking, <laughs> yeah, what, am what I doing here? is this? You know, what <laughs> is this experience? But yeah. it was that real experience with the Lord and that real, um, the Holy Spirit working and yeah. tugging at my heart and made me realize the abandon that I could have in, in the Lord and He would set His path for me. Wow, so it changed yeah. your whole life, that one invitation. For sure, for so, sure. Uh, so yeah. you're a pastor's wife. I am. So, had, so I never thought that was gonna happen <laughs> when, I, when I said yes. But um, I think that you walk yes. through the doors that God opens. And back when I was a child, I went to a, like a little neighborhood um, you know, Bible study. And my folks, like I said, were super supportive of this. And, and I remember drawing nice. a, a verse out of a basket and the little teacher said, this is going to be your life verse. And I thought, you know, I'm young. I'm like, okay, this is from God. And it was uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And it said, rejoice always, pray continually mm -hmm. and give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I think having that, you know, from a young child believing truly this was my verse, no one else's from the Bible, it helped carve that path of those um, priorities in my life. Because those are tough years. Yes, yeah. Yeah, they are. But as um, going forward and walking through, and again, mm -hmm. even going gen um, going into college, not thinking that uh, the ministry full time was going to be my um, vocation, but uh, you know, John and I, from the beginning of meeting, yeah. knew that we were both had the same passion. We actually met on a ministry outreach, and I was like. Hey, he's not, not the same bad. thing that I'm doing not here. Not bad. So like I really him. do believe that, yeah, as we go forward, yeah. wherever we are, whether we're single or married, God continues to put yes. people in our path that um, He will use to enhance or direct or mm -hmm. 
I didn't even know what a pastor's wife was supposed to be like. So it, I think it's one of the most difficult mm. jobs on the planet. You know, um, I was so blessed to my very first venture out into this job uh, to be at a church where the pastor's wife sat me down and I was very young and she said, Carrie, support your husband in ministry because yeah. that's important. That's what God has called you both to. But find something that you love to do and do that. And so as I have, you know, each stage and age of your life, right. your volunteer experience and your, you know, your, your responsibilities change. And I know that they have for mine. Sometimes I would be able to dive fully in and do ministry with John. But as our children started to come yes. and life, uh, you know, my work, my, you know, my job and other things happen, you know, you just have to readjust all the time. But keeping that focus that God can knit together your desires and your um, passions into ministry at any yes. place along the line. You seem happy. You seem yeah. um, very, you know, uh, in the middle of what the Lord wants you to do. For sure. Okay, yeah. so for ordinary people who think they're ordinary but really aren't, what would you say as we end this segment? I would say that caring for your soul as an individual, not letting, you know, other things get in your way, caring for who God made you and who yeah. He gifted you, that opens the opportunity for peace, for um, fulfillment in God, Mm -hmm. And um, he also can use you in great ways, but understanding that God has a purpose for everyone's life yes. and he wants to use us in some aspect. And perhaps take an inventory of your neighbors and community. Oh, yes. The mission field is right with, with you. It's always with you. We just need to open our eyes and feel that God, yeah. you know, that God illuminates us to say, yeah, that, that child or uh -huh. that neighbor they need encouragement. And you know, if they select Calvary Temple mm -hmm. to visit, yes. I know firsthand yeah. that you are greeted with a big smile oh. and there is acceptance from the yeah. moment you walk into the parking lot until you go into the service. So more, mm. give the Lord a willing heart and look at where it takes you. More with Carrie Gregg when we return. Don't go away. I just continually prayed about it and said, Lord, if you want this to be my job description, then truly open up the doors. We're with Carrie Gregg from Calvary Temple Church of Concord. And before the program, we were talking about the value of prayer yes. in your life. Would you talk about that a bit more? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I just read a quote um, from Anne Frank, and it, and it mm. said, you know, when we have problems and we have um, things that are of our concern, we're of a worldly concern. But when we actually talk to God, we're mm. in that heavenly realm where the impossible takes place. And so prayer, um, I shared my verse before, and it says pray continually. Yeah. So I've really looked at my prayer life as being a continual conversation with the Lord. And, you know, we laugh and we cry and we talk about, you know, joys yes. and issues and yes. hardships. Yes. But, um, you know, as a mom, prayer for my children is huge. Uh, God knows what's going on in their lives. They're all out of the house and already all morning right, for me. Yeah. <laughs> he yes. knows right where they are. Yes. And I get an opportunity to join him in yes. prayer and prayer for my husband in uh, the ministry and the issues that I know that he goes. It's just this great, unbelievable relationship, um, relationship yes. and offer that the Lord says, come to me yeah. and commune with me and talk with me and I will be there and be your best friend. So I am a huge advocate of prayer, yeah. uh, being involved both personally and corporately with the body of Christ. You know, I, I picture the Lord always standing there and we're the ones that turn our back, but he's like always there yep. wanting to commune with us, make right. our petitions. But I've had people kind of, you know, challenge that in that, mm. that God is not concerned about our small things. Mm. But yet he shows up in the small things. He shows up in the areas of, you know, the mundane of our lives, mm -hmm. as well as our responsibility, really our responsibility to pray for the world. And I have a, I have a timer on my uh, phone that yes. at 714, twice a day, it 
mm. chimes. And it reminds me, it's Second Chronicles 7, yes, 14, yes. that says, if my people who are called by my name, and it goes on to say, if you humble yourself yes. and seek my face, then yeah. I will change your land. So I, I take that, that time when that ringer goes off to pray for our president, to pray mm, for our country, yes. to pray for the big decisions in our world. And it is, it, you know, it's not long and I'm not, you know, bowing my knee at, you know, in, in the grocery store if I happen to be there at 714, but it is that constant yes. prayer because I have that, com that communication with yeah. the Lord all the time. And everything. Yeah. He's concerned about every single part of our life. Right, right. All right so prayer and compassion, how do those right. interrelate? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because, I, like I said, God takes some of your um, natural gifts or your desires or your hobbies, and He uses those. And as I look back uh, throughout my life and ministry, it's finding projects to do within our community that would help a Habitat for Humanity home that we helped build at one point and yes. being involved in the community. And so when we were new at our church many, many years ago, uh, being the new girl on <laughs> campus, you know, everyone wants to yes. get to know you. And uh, I was asked to speak in a Sunday school class on my couple couple weeks, which I'm not a public speaker, but I took the, the you know, the opportunity to do that. And so um, that prayer, faith. prayer was my first um, topic that I wanted to talk about. And as I was preparing this second um, Sunday school class, I thought, well, it really is compassion. It really is compassion for our community. And, and yet, I, not being a public speaker, an acrostic is a great way to set up a message, but um, compassion was way too long for me to figure out what to say. And so I thought, well, care. You know, I'm going to make an acrostic. This is what I'm going to say. And I'm going to come up with a lot of C words, you know, that have to do with compassion and caring and, nice. and then, you know, A yes. and R and e. and e. And so I, you know, made this whole um, lesson and I felt like I was done. And then the Lord said, but you're not done. And mind you, I hadn't started in any kind of um, ministry yet. Uh, we were new. Yes. I didn't know. I knew God wasn't going to ask me to do what he had asked me to do before. I was in a new season of my yes. life, and I kind of looked at that as being a new adventure. And so as I uh, was able to look at my paper and I saw, I, the Lord said, well, there's one more letter. C-A-R-E. Yeah, exactly. That's what I did. I, this is how I spell. And he goes, no, why? And I can promise you, I had never looked at my own personal name in this way. But the why was for you. And what he, the Lord said to me, you, wow. all those things that you had listed, this is what I want you to do. And I was, I, it was, it's one of those, you know, moments where you know the Lord has spoken to you. And I've had a, just a few in my life. So it was undeniably, you know, someone told me once, oh, I just think it's so wonderful that your mom spell your name that way, your parents <laughs> spell your name that way. And because it's so what you're doing. But I thought I had never truly looked at that, but I knew I was being commissioned by wow. the Lord to do this. And, um, and yet didn't have a, I didn't have a venue yet to do that, but our church being also an already a compassionate church, a, a church that's in the community and constantly caring and having a real reputation. Hundreds for of volunteers, thousands of volunteers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they didn't have someone to perhaps coordinate all the efforts and to look at new areas to be in uh, involved in our community. And so I just continually prayed about it and said, Lord, if you want this to be my job description, then truly open up the doors and um, allow wow. me to, again, in this se new season of my life, uh, express those gifts and talents that you have given me. So in that Sunday morning, yeah. did you share that message? I did. I did. And even though I would be able to tell these new friends that I didn't really know very well, I said, I don't know how God is going to make this happen. And, um, but I invite you to be included in the process of what God is doing in my life so that we can journey this together and see what the Lord has for Calvary Temple Church, um, how He wants us to reach our community for Him. Did you think that was the beginning? Was that the beginning? You know what? It was the beginning, but I had no idea what God would open up. All right. And so your church now participates in, I believe, nine 
areas of compassion yes. since that night or evening right. when the Lord shared mm -hmm. that vision with you. More with Carrie Gregg when we return. One of the joys I had a few weeks ago is walking into church and one of our dear ladies in a walker, she's coming in and we were visiting and then I noticed she has a compassion bag. And I'm just, I said, thank you. And she says, listen, I can't go out with you, but I can sure provide what you're asking for. Welcome back. Carrie, I can hardly wait to hear how that conversation between you and the Lord turned into compassion yeah. at Calvary Temple Church. Yeah. Tell well, me. <laughs> it's been an exciting journey. It's been um, over the past seven years, um, God opening up some doors. Uh, maybe one of our very first uh, efforts in Compassion Ministries was to uh, look at the homeless situation in our area. Mm. And right away, you know, being the new kid, somebody would say, hey, we should do this and we should do that. And our church had an effort uh, into San Francisco with the homeless community and going and mm -hmm. uh, Friday nights, and which was wonderful. And I highly recommend that. But I knew that we had homeless in our own area. Yeah. And I have a real responsibility, I believe, for the zip code and the region that God has called us to. And so we looked at um, a laundry ministry. We call it Clean Start. And what we do is uh, once a month, we go to a laundry facility and provide the soap and the money and the fellowship for our homeless community to do their laundry. And so we give them dignity so by amazing. inviting them to participate in it. It's not like it's a drop-off center by right. any means. They come and they start their load and we put this stuff in and, and it takes about 45 minutes, you know, to do a load. And it's very expensive, you know, minimum of $6. And, you know, wow. a lot of people, if you're going to have $6 in your hand and you have a very limited income, if any, right. You're going to choose food. You're going to choose other things. Yeah. And so it has become a very valuable um, outreach to our homeless community. And we bring with us a hot food and, you know, many other items that could be used. So amazing. But we have been doing this for nearly five years and in a local community. And it's just been amazing. Our volunteers are so connected. And I believe that those that perhaps re remain nameless to a lot of people, right. When we know their name and we invite them yeah. to come in, Patty, welcome. Jim, we're so glad you're here. Just gives them a lot of dignity. And so and we're excited about that. And a chance to interact in a way. And I'm sure you've learned a lot about each of these individuals and what they're going through oh. and their stories. And homelessness and is not what we all think it is. No. You know, it's, it's many things. Yeah. It's many things. And yes, it is some of the things that we right. already have a preconceived idea. But it's so much mm -hmm. more. It's so much more. So we have that passion. Um, another thing that we're into is our uh, adopt-a-school program where we're in our local schools. And um, every, every community has a church yes. and every community has a school. And to partner with that school and to be able to be a resource for the teachers, for the administration, mm -hmm. even if you're coming in and you're bringing a bouquet of flowers and say, have a great first day of school. Yes. You know, we're with you. Our church, we're praying for you. Thank you for teaching our children. And I know that there's a lot of things that happen in a public school that maybe we not, might not agree with, but let's show up in areas that we, we can. That not just where we agree, but where we also have the tension of bringing Christ to a dark place. So not saying our public schools are a dark place. I believe they're um, an amazing place where future leaders, future mm -hmm. um, uh, generations are being nurtured. Mm -hmm. And so we should be a pro part of that process. They might not allow us to pray in the school, but we can pray for the individuals that are there yes. and help them yes. with their future. Yes, so it's and we can partner with partner. it. Yes. first grader, a second grader, yes. and teach them how to read and to make that impact. And it's also been impactful for mm -hmm. the uh, the staff to Especially have the, su the support. Yeah. Some of the schools in the area there, yeah. um, the people live at the poverty level. Yes, yes so. very much so. So another um, area that we get a chance to reach our community as a whole church, not everybody can, you know, go into the laundry ministries, not up everybody's alley, and perhaps they're, uh, they're not able to go into the school, but everybody can participate in our compassion bag effort. 
And so, what is this? This is very fun. This is our compassion bag, and it's compassion for the community. And um, about every six weeks, yeah. we partner either with a local organization like our schools uh -huh. or um, a national ministry like Convoy of Hope, or we partner with um, our, maybe our youth. Anyways, we're changing it up about every six weeks. And everyone in our church comes in and they can participate in a compassion effort. Their card speaks of what we're asking for. It can be as simple as a backpack for, um, for a child, or um, this next month, we're gonna be partnering with a local women's shelter. So, you know, feminine nice. products and shampoo mm -hmm. and things like that, just practical items. We keep it about a 15 to $20 ask, and everybody can participate. Can anybody watching get involved with this uh, program? Oh, for sure. Okay. I mean, every church that is listening or every organization, please, it's not, <laughs> use it in your own church, but you can also always contact us and find out what it is that yeah. we're doing. Um, you know, we mentioned nine areas and I was able to highlight three, but we want to be known as a church that's in our community, mm -hmm. meeting the resources. We can't assume what our community needs. You need to find out what your community yeah. needs and then see how you can partner with the Lord to provide that to your community. You are doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I'm sitting here um, and we're ending the program, um, mm -hmm. It strikes me you are not an ordinary person. Oh, oh yes. And it strikes no. me <laughs> that you are a public speaker. No. And then the thought I had just now was, what if, yeah. what if that neighbor wouldn't have invited you? Exactly. Look at all of these folks yeah. that are being ministered to and yeah. how the Lord has used mm. you all of these years and you're not done. It, I'm so no. happy that you came today Thank and encouraged us all me. that in our environment, in our world, yes. we can do something. Yes. And we appreciate all that Calvary Temple Church has done over the years and yeah. continues to do. So thank well, you for being here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And true, it's not just what we're doing, it's what people can do in their own community. Amen. So thank you. Well, thank you. For more information about Compassion Ministries or to get in touch with Carrie Gregg, visit calvarytemple.org or ktln.tv. Remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry and programs like this one are made possible through your support. Thanks for being with us and join us again next week.